On a recent trip to Bristol, I discovered one of the most impressive retail parks I've seen for a while, and one of the worst new EV charging installations I've ever come across. I'm Dave, welcome to Dave Takes It On. Well, as easy EV installations go, this one has so much in its favour. Layout is superb, chargers are chem power, one of the best on the market, facilities are great high quality, space brilliant, the marking second to none. The power has to be seen to be believed. There are 150 kilowatts for us mere mortals with 400 volt architecture, but a massive 300 kilowatts for the lucky few who have 800 volt architecture. That's you Hyundai, Kia or Porsche Taycan drivers. So what's gone so dreadfully, fatally wrong? Well, for that you need to go back to the 80s when Bradley Stoke was in its heyday. It was a small town, large village on the outskirts of Bristol, and it was targeted by the house builders. They bought up all the greenbelt land they could, moved in, big scale, and built massive estates of new houses, and in the boom years, and to make them even more attractive, they piled on all the goodies, mainly financed by 110% mortgages. Yeah, you could buy a house on a 100% mortgage, no deposit, then order things like carpets, curtains, white goods, washing machine, dishwashers, and furniture, and put that onto the mortgage. Oh, those were the days. And people flooded in. Over 9,000 houses were built rather quickly, and most were detached, smaller number being semi-detached. Well, so far, all so good. But anyone of a certain age will remember the booms and busts that were the housing market back then. And rather quickly, the housing bubble burst and prices crashed. But it hit Bradley Stoke very much harder since the average mortgage was already more than the average house was worth, courtesy of the washing machine, furniture and curtains and carpets that had been added to the mortgage. So a house originally worth probably around 20,000 had a 22, 23,000 pound mortgage, but its price had now crashed, crashed to below 15,000. Negative equity on a massive scale, hence the renaming of Bradley Stoke to Sadly Broke. Now in time, negative equity normally disappears and prices rise again. But too many people were hugely overstretched and had to sell. Over a relatively short period of time, the 9,000 plus prime detached and semi-detached luxury homes were snapped up, mainly by housing associations and the local council. Somewhere around 30% of the houses snatched up became social housing. Which now decades later, it's a thriving suburb of Bristol and worthy of the new retail park that's just opened up at Willowbrook. That's a massive development and has all that area needs. And on the days I visited, it was thriving. And at the end of the car park is a superb Osprey, Osprey EV charging installation with 16 high power, 800 volt, 300 kilowatt chem power chargers. Anyone see the problem here yet? Well, Osprey certainly didn't. Well, clue number one, most homes in Bradley Stoke are detached and semi-detached, making it a desirable area. Clue number two, a good percentage of the housing is still social housing. Okay, let me put you out of your misery. There's nothing at all wrong with social housing. It's much in demand, much needed but it is not the most likely place where you'll find residents with exceedingly expensive EVs parked in the drive. And that drive is the next problem. The bulk of the houses are semis or detached by definition. That means they almost all have off-road parking, often for multiple cars. And with off-road parking, you have the ability to charge at home. In fact, you'd be mad to pay Osprey 79 pence per kilowatt hour if you can charge at home for 7.5 pence per kilowatt hour, one tenth the cost, and much more convenient. So, a large percentage of the local population cannot afford new EVs. Those that can, almost certainly can charge them at home, which raises the obvious question, who on earth is Osprey's intended customer? I really would like to hear who they're targeting. See, they're too far off the motorway to attract EV drivers to divert there, and if they were tempted, they, they could easily, much more easily, stop at the services on the motorway and get charged the same 79 pence at Grid Serve or Apple Green. Half a mile away are two old and two brand new Osprey EV chargers at a local Aldi. 
Um, and Bristol City itself already has, it's fairly well served with chargers with the usual networks, grid serves, Instavolts, EV, EV, Evil Eye, Revive and, and others. And that was even before Tesla began opening three of their superchargers to non-Tesla. So I returned to the same question. This is a superb installation, beautifully laid out and installed, top quality chargers, but who's it for? By the way, if you're enjoying the content of this video, please click the like button. If you want more, please subscribe and click the bell notification icon so we can alert you when we launch a new video. Well, as often happens when filming, I get accosted well, in the nicest possible way by security. Where possible, I do try to contact someone in charge, let them know I'm filming or ask them if it's OK. But locations like this baffle me. You, you have individual shops. Some of them have their own security. You have a management company overall. You might also have a security company over the management company. And often they might have a separate car parking. You know, it, it's a mess. So here I just began filming and had just completed most of what I wanted to film when one of our Patreon members turned up. Uh, this is Rachel and we began chatting. Well at this point security arrived and in the nicest possible way they asked me if I would mind having a word with the retail park management manager. So apologies to Rachel at this point, I would have liked to spend more time, but you were there, you know what happened. Uh, but I did have a deadline for my next venue, and now I have to slot in a trip upstairs before I left. Well, a great big thank you to Simon, the manager. We had a chat about what I was doing and why, and it was very amicable, as it normally is. I got my permission to launch my videos filmed on their premises, and all were happy. I did manage to ask a few pertinent questions to try and verify or deny my initial research. You see, I checked on several occasions the occupancy of the 16 charges. Never saw more than a handful occupied. Well, Simon was very diplomatic, but he certainly did not deny that they were not being fully utilised. Well, in my opinion, it's a clear case where grabbing the government grants and subsidies quickly were at a higher priority than pure business sense. Several of my local uh, supermarkets have 10, 12, even 16 EV chargers, but usually this is an area with a large percentage of terrace properties where residents often can afford an EV, uh, but home charging is not an option. And some shopping centres and retail parks, the more remotely located, involving a decent drive, so making the attraction of charging while you shop much more likely. I have no problem with the Willowbrook Retail Park. I think that may be in an ideal position. It appeared to be in much demand and busy and popular when I was there. Bradley Stoke has nothing wrong with it. As an area or town or suburb, it seems to be very nice. It seems to be a popular place to live. It's just not an ideal location for 16 high-power expensive EV chargers. Many comments I receive ask along the lines of, well, if the other charging networks can't make a go of it and the chargers fall into disrepair, why doesn't Tesla simply come along and take them over? Well, I'm hoping this video might answer that very question for you. Tesla operates proprietary software that looks at, predicts where all their customers live, where they charge, how far they drive, how often they charge and how much they take on board each visit. And it can then predict where they might stop and need to charge. And before anyone shouts Big Brother, your smartphone already does this and a lot more. Were you aware, if you've got Siri or Google or Alexa active on your phone, that your phone not only tracks you, but listens to every word you say, just in case you say the magic words, OK Google or Siri or whatever it is? Well, Tesla predicts where the supercharger should be located so that they receive maximum usage. Why on earth try to lumber with failed charger locations in areas where there is no demonstrable demand or likely to be in the near future? I do hope the installation survives, but I have my serious doubts. Longer range batteries are already here, and the Polestar 5 has just announced a new generation of batteries that can charge at silly rates and uh, charge up to 80% in less than 10 minutes. I fear that the days of leaving your EV plugged in while you go shopping are already on the wane. Well, thanks for listening and watching. I'm Dave.